please remain standing. At this time, I will direct everyone to the flag in the back of the church. We ask you all to remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Typically, we remove our head coverings. However, if your head covering is a graduation cap, you may uh, leave it on for uh, the anthem. Please be seated. Greetings to everyone. I'm the program director of Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. My name is Dr. Barry Lease. I'll be the presiding officer for the 166th commencement exercises of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. It is a sincere privilege and pleasure to welcome all to this special event. While we certainly are honored to be uh, joined by our family, our friends, the graduates, of course, our special guests, and of course, our alumni, I'm also pleased to welcome a few other dignitaries. First, let me point to Mr. Eugene Ogrodnik, the president and CEO of the Pittsburgh Institute. Mr. Grotnick. Next to Mr. Grotnick is Dr. Joseph Marcellia, the Dean Emeritus of the school. Next to Dr. Joe is Dr. Mark Marnich. He is the, uh, the affiliate we work with for our Point Park, uh, uh, our, our program that we have in, in accordance with Point Park. So Dr. Marnich, you can stand, thank you. And next to all of them at the corner is a very, very special guest. It is the author of the embalming book for five editions, Dr. Robert Mayer. Dr. Mayer, please stand. He didn't have a sixth in him, but we might know somebody that did. Graduates and friends, family, if you'd permit me just a moment to offer a brief message. I want to say something that's broadcast on our YouTube channel. It's a message directly from our chairman of the board, James O. Pinkerton. And it starts with, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for choosing Pittsburgh Institute for your funeral service education. We are approaching our 90th year and you are now ready to join a legacy of almost 8,000 alumni that has faithfully served bereaved families while caring for their decedent loved ones. We know that your journey has not been easy, but we also know it has been worthwhile as you sit here today. For today marks a rite of passage and recognizes your hard work diligence over the past year, 
or year or so, depending on which program you were enrolled. It is a day that Pittsburgh Institute and all here to witness recognizes you, your hard work, your accomplishments, and your success. Yet while today is about you, I would be remiss if I did not mention the following. Janae Cecilia, a contemporary poet and author, is quoted as saying, surround yourself with people who don't just ask how you are doing. Surround yourself with people who make an effort to make sure they are part of the reason you are successful. Well, I would like to recognize two specific groups of people who made sure you were successful and sit here today. First, let me recognize the amazing PIMS team of administrative personnel led by Mrs. Nicole Alachko and faculty, and the faculty which is led by Dean Michael Burns. These selfless individuals on the PIMS team, whether they were administrative or academic, were there for you, mentoring you, caring about you and caring about today, your success. I often say to our team, we are not in the business of education. We are in the business of dream fulfillment and today is that day. Or in some cases it could be a nightmare, but that's just, that's another story, right? So today, let me take a minute to recognize our PIMS team members. I'm going to ask them all to please stand and I'd ask you all to give them a sincere round of applause. Faculty, staff. I am privileged to work next to this amazing group of people each day, and I just cannot thank all of them enough. Second is a group that they may not be as obvious, and they may even be overlooked in some cases, because their contributions don't seem as demonstrative at times. But they are always there for each and every one of you. Perhaps it was a late night phone call to calm your anxieties, a gentle hug after a tough test, or more notably, a check for next tuition's term. Next term tuition, I'm sorry. Your family, your support systems, your friends, those people that loved you are another reason you are here today. And I am going to ask all of the family and friends, please stand and be recognized and let us give you the round of applause you deserve. Graduates, as I bring my opening remarks to a conclusion, I would like to leave you with a simple but hopefully inspirational message. It seems fitting that as we celebrate the holiday for the late Dr. Martin Luther King, that we might find something that he said that could be useful. Now, in fact, much of what he says, much of his famous speeches are immortal and remain as relevant today is when they were spoken years ago. But perhaps one of his simplest messages is most prescient today. Graduates, as you enter the funeral service, it's not easy. I'm sure those of you who are joined by family or friends that are in the funeral service would tell you about those days. It is those days that we realize we are uncommon people because common people cannot do this job. And it is on those days that perhaps the vocation will ask more of you than you're willing or even able to give. But on those days, think of these simple yet eloquent words by the late Dr. King who said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience but where he stands at the time of challenges and controversy in life. 
Thank you. I get ready to turn the microphone over to, I know the person that all of you are here to listen to, to, del to deliver a message that will inspire you to go forward. Our keynote speaker comes to us after a storied career, both as a funeral service educator and funeral service professional. She has been part of dream fulfillment for mortuary students at Wayne State University for more than for about 25 years. She has faithfully served bereaved families and cared for their decedent loved ones for longer than 25 years. <laughs> She comes to us today as the author of the sixth edition, carrying the torch that Dr. Mayer had started and lit with the first five. We are so pleased to have her today to be the keynote speaker for our 166th commencement exercise. Graduates, families, friends, to present her speech, Holder of Things, it is my distinct honor to present to you the Honorable Sharon G. Mascarella. Thank you, Dr. Lees faculty and staff of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. It is my honor to be here today to deliver the 166th commencement address to the graduating class. Welcome family and friends as we join together on this significant occasion in fellowship and in celebration of these fine individuals. Congratulations to you graduates. This day marks a milestone achievement on your part. Be very proud. Everyone in this room is proud of you. And without a doubt, the people in this room, especially your people, know well the sacrifices that you made, the challenges that you had to overcome just to hold on, to push through, and to arrive here. Graduates, please, Remember to thank your people for pushing through this with you. There were challenges to overcome and sacrifices made on their part too. Challenge is a powerful motivator. I'd love nothing more than to stand here and assure you that it's going to be smooth sailing from here on in. No more challenges. Sorry, I can't. This is funeral service, the OG of 24-7, 365 work. We may turn off the lights, we may lock the door, but we never close. But then, you didn't want a boring career, right? Welcome to one of the world's oldest professions. Caring for the dead and for those who love them is one of the most fascinating, most rewarding, and yes, most challenging vocations of all. Graduates, you have endured countless hours in classrooms and labs while others spoke to you. If you will allow me to hold your attention for just a few more minutes, I promise to keep my remarks brief. I'm going to share with you a different perspective about the little things that you will do as a funeral professional. The truth is, the simple and the kind things that you do and that we do for one another hold us together. Along this journey, this makes all of the difference. Throughout your career, people will be intrigued by what you do. The question, what exactly is it that you do, will become so commonplace. Please consider in advance how you will answer. The words you choose, how much or how little you share, is crucially important. Each time you answer, remember this, you will describe all of us in this profession through your words. And the person asking that question of you will lose someone they love. 
maybe not now, hopefully not for a long time, it's just an inevitable part of life's truth. And when they do, they will remember your answer. A thoughtful answer can do great good. On the other side, a poor answer can do great harm. As an example of the latter, just search embalming on the internet. The role you will play in your communities is both an enormous privilege and one of great responsibility. Make no mistake, you are well equipped to meet the challenges that lie ahead. You will shine. This institution has formally prepared you for this. You have built the foundation. You have a core comprehension of funeral history, theory, and practice. And you have heart, and heart matters. In each of your hearts, you hold a deep and genuine commitment to help others. Hold on to that. In fact, holding things is an essential part of what you will do in helping others. This matter of holding is really what I want to illuminate for you here today. As a funeral professional on any given day, you will hold yourself open to listening to their memories, to their concerns, and to their needs. You will hold their hands. You will hold a box of tissue. You will hold the door as they come in and they go out. And when something is handed to you, you will hold it as long as you need to. You will hold the promises that you make and uphold your integrity and their dignity without compromise. Personal thoughts will be placed on hold so as not to interfere with others or with your task. You will hold your tongue when speaking holds benefit only for you. You will withhold all judgment upon all people at all times. You will hold the attention of the crowd to begin a service, to offer directions to the cemetery or to the repast. You will hold out your arms to assist anyone at any time with anything. You will hold your chin up and your shoulders square as you brace for the three rifle volleys at the committal. When you hold a tiny one in your arms, you will truly know how fragile this life is. Often, you will hold back your own tears. Always you will hold in safekeeping every decedent entrusted to your care and every confidence that has been placed with you. At day's end, you will return home and you will hold tightly to the ones you love. Congratulations, graduates. Go on your way, shine brightly, for you are all trusted holders of things. Thank you. Sharon, if you could remain standing there, I'd like to call President Ogrotnik to the dais. And we have a special presentation. <clears throat> President Ogrotnik will award Sharon with this plaque, bearing the inscription, a quote from Sharon G. Mascarella, teaching is the most amazing vocation, and so is being a funeral director. Sharon G. Mascarello, in honor and appreciation for your dedication to funeral service education and the profession at large, and in sincere gratitude for providing the inspirational message, holder of things, as the keynote speaker at the 166th commencement exercise of Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science, given this 13th day of January, 2023. Thank you, Sharon.
Next, I will call to the podium Mr. Nicholas Ritchie, who will lead you in the funeral service oath. Mr. Ritchie. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our commencement ceremony this afternoon. It truly is an honor to participate in this graduation ceremony each term, and it's, uh, it, it's just always such an honor to be here and uh, present the funeral service oath to all of our graduates. For those of you that do not know me, I am our full-time faculty uh, member and I have this weekly tradition that I do with both our campus and online students that I have to get to before the oath very briefly. I start each class with an, a, an individual who died on this day in history, followed by a quote from that individual. And I have my final one for a number of you that I have to share. <clears throat> Today in history, January 13th, 1978, Hubert Humphrey, American politician, the 38th Vice President of the United States and a 1968 presidential candidate died of bladder cancer at the age of 66 today. I wanted to provide a just brief background of Vice President Humphrey. He was the Vice President to Lyndon B. Johnson after President Johnson took over for President Kennedy after his assassination. And he lost his presidency bid in 1968 to Richard Nixon. Before I share the quote, the story about his funeral and death is, is rather interesting. He spent time in the hospital leading up to his death and his impending funeral. He used that time that he was in the hospital to its greatest potential. He took the time to call old political acquaintances, one of which was Richard Nixon. He personally invited his former rival to his own funeral. In addition to that, he also took time to go room to room, visiting, telling jokes, and listening to other patients in an attempt to console them while he himself was dying. The quote of the day from Vice President Humphrey, in real life, unlike Shakespeare, the sweetness of the rose depends upon the name it bears. Things are not only what they are, they are in very important respects, what they seem to be. And it's a very deep quote. <clears throat> My interpretation of this is that there are many things in our society that are given a reputation based upon the name they bear. However, we all have the power to change that prejudgment that comes with that name. Three came to mind for myself. Death, a morbid term in our society, Vice President Humphrey termed, turned this term, death, into a beautiful opportunity to be selfless and console others. In turn, a term usually indicating the lowest person in the chain of command. Each day, strive to show your coworkers that you serve, that you are willing, enthusiastic, and capable. Funeral director. A term that is defined by the Bureau of Labor Statistics as someone who plans the details of a funeral. Be more than that. Show humility to the families that entrust you with the care of their loved ones and take the time to listen and connect with them, just as Vice President Humphrey did. If you do this, the term funeral director can transform into friend, confidant, and pillar of your community. At this time, Graduates, if you would please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me the funeral service oath. I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear by that which I hold most sacred, that I shall be loyal to the funeral service profession, to the funeral service profession. and just and generous to its, to its members, that I shall lead my life, lead my life and, practice my art, and practice my art 
in uprightness and honor. In uprightness that into whatsoever house I shall enter, it shall be for the benefit and comfort of those bereaved. That I shall not let the constant relationship and familiarity with death give me cause to yield to carelessness or to violate any obligation to society or to the dignity of our profession. That I shall abstain from every voluntary act of misconduct and corruption. That I shall obey the civil laws. That I shall not divulge professional confidences. And that I shall be faithful to those who have placed their trust in me. While I continue to keep this oath, While I continue to keep this oath unviolated, unviolated, may it be granted, may it be granted to, me to, enjoy to me to enjoy honor in my life, honor in my life and, in my and in my profession, and may I be respected, and may I be respected by, all people, by all people for all time. Thank you, graduates. You may be seated. Again, it truly is an honor to administer this oath to you today. Thank you. Mr. Ritchie, thank you for leading the graduates in the oath. Next, I'd like to call to the podium the Dean of Faculty and Students, Michael Burns, to present the class of the 166th Commencement Exercises. Dean Burns. No, stop. Keep going. Keep going. It's okay. Thank you, Dr. Lees. And thank you for that uh, little applause there. <laughs> wow, have things changed in a year or two. COVID is still lurking in the shadows, but doesn't dominate the news. We're between big elections. Certain parts of the world are at war. Some parts are not. But let's concentrate on you today. After all, that's why we're here. A year or two ago, you were a student in strategies class wondering if this school was for you, and if this career was for you. Some of you had exposure to this crazy field of study. Some came in blind. Think about all you have learned and all you have absorbed, and now consider basic information. Things like debits on the left and credits on the right. I'd actually ask Mr. Richie if that was right this morning. The helix of the ear, the OG of the casket. All these are normal phrases to you now. Remember when I told you that this goes fast? Your first time in the care center was rough, but by the 30th time, you could teach the class. It's an amazing thing to witness. Things will continue to change as you move forward. Take them all in. Absorb every piece of knowledge you can. You know how important it is. Some of you will earn higher degrees in the years to come, but all of you will be exposed to new things and master all of those new things. Also keep in mind a few things that will never change. Profound grief will never change. You will face it almost daily. The depth of empathy that you can offer someone will never change. Continue to offer support. The needs of those you serve will change only by face. The true need will always be there. Embrace this career, or better yet, vocation. Run with it. Make it better. 
Make me proud, make Pims proud. And most importantly, never, ever, ever forget the three conditions to complete any restorative work are... I've done my job. Thank you so much. I now have the honor to present the class. I'm going to ask Dr. Lees and Ms. Aleshko to please step forward. The following students are awarded a diploma in funeral directing and embalming. Madeline Anderson. <laughs> Member of the U.S. Marine Corps, Stephen A. Ball. <laughs> Member of the U.S. Army and Senator of the School, Brent Beckwith. Magna Cum Laude, Ellis Kaufman. <laughs> Natalie Compel. <laughs> Logan Flieger. Ashley Giles. <laughs> Member of the U.S. Navy and graduating summa cum laude, Emily Gingrich. <laughs> graduating cum laude, Emma Gonzalez. Allison Hutchko. <laughs> Member of the Senate and an ensign, Camille Johns. <laughs> Member of the Senate and an ensign, and graduating summa cum laude, Zoe Kind. Graduating cum laude, Jamie Paul Kissel. Sierra Cotton. An ensign and a member of the Senate, Hannah McQuaid. Alyssa Miller. An ensign, member of the Student Senate, Mary Musap. Destiny Nearhood. Alexandria Pohl. Amanda Trout. <laughs> An ensign and member of the Student Senate, graduating cum laude, Mark Unruh.
An associate in specialized technology degree in funeral service will now be awarded. Christina Blake. Valerie A. Burba. And Ensign Hannah Custer. Brittany Dunn. Darby Jane Fisher. Victorio Fragapan. Brisa Glazier. Brooke Hale. Emma Halstead. <laughs> Member of the Senate, Jessica Hoover. That's my <laughs> Kelly Jo Kuhn. Emma Sam Linen. Amanda Louise Lumpkin. Sarah Marie Maid. Joseph Shevlin. Jared Steyer. Robert Peltonen. Adriana Phillips. <laughs> Alicia Randall. <laughs> Kirsten Wenner. <laughs> Jane E. Williams. Class, just stand one more time, please. I present to you today the class of the 166th commencement of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. Please move your tassels from the right side to the left side of your cap. You may be seated. This is a very special part of our, uh, part of our ceremony today. And I have the honor of awarding some awards. While all of us have uh, reached our commencement today, and all of us will be great funeral directors in the future, there are some special awards we want to award to those members of the class. If I may have Shelby Agosley and Ashley Larakis, please step forward. 
Shelby is the president of the Allegheny County Funeral Directors Association, and Ashley is the executive director of the Allegheny County Funeral Directors Association. This award was established as an award of merit and recognition of outstanding scholastic achievement in all branches of the curriculum at the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. It is hereby awarded this 13th day of January 2023 to Jessica Hoover. The next award is the Memorial Award. Be it known that this Memorial Award was established to commemorate contributions made by the alumni, students, and faculty of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science in the service of their country. The recipient, who has been chosen by his or her classmates as the graduate who, through qualities of leadership, professional conduct, and good citizenship, best typified their ideals is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023, to Brent Beckwith. <laughs> if Michael Berner, representative of the Calco Chemical Company, will please step forward to present this next award. Be it known that the Calco Chemical Restorative Art Award was established in recognition of outstanding ability, attitude, commitment, and achievement in the areas of restorative art and cosmetology who, in the opinion of the clinical faculty of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science, merits this recognition. It is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023, to Jessica Hoover. Thank you, Mr. Berner. <laughs> Matt Black, if you'll please join us. Mr. Black is representative of the Dodge Chemical Company. Be it known that the Dodge Award was established to recognize a student who has demonstrated both exceptional and theoretical expertise throughout the entire embalming curricula practicum. Is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023 to Mary Musap. This award includes an embalming kit provided by the Dodge Chemical Company. <laughs> if T.J. Roser, the funeral director, coroner liaison from CORE, the Center for Organ Recovery and Education, please join us in the dais. The Center for Organ Recovery and Education, CORE, has established a Pledge for Life Scholarship Fund and awards a scholarship to one student who is enrolled in the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science who can demonstrate that they will make an impact in the field of organ, tissue, and cornea recovery. The scholarship is funded through CORE's Partnership Strategies Committee by delegating funds given in memory or honor of an organ, tissue, or cornea donor or a transplant recipient. With over 123,000 people waiting for a life-saving transplant and many more in need of tissue and corneas, this scholarship will help develop professionals who can make a difference in these people's lives. 
It is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023, to Adriana Phillips. This award includes a check from CORE in the amount of $500. If Paul Bowman will please join us. Mr. Bowman is Vice President and General Manager of the Champion Chemical Company. Be it known, the Champion Award for Mortuary Science Excellence is a criteria-based award of merit. This award bears the namesake of the company that has focused not only on providing state-of-the-art chemicals and products, but as indicated in the credo for its expanding encyclopedia, the Champion Company is dedicated to the furtherance of knowledge and education to the funeral service profession. This award is presented to the student who is recognized by members of the PIM science faculty to have demonstrated overall scholarship, aptitude, attitude, and practical skills, specifically in the core science component of the curriculum of the Institute. It is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023, to Brittany Dunn. This award includes a grave plaque and with a credit with Champion Company of $500. The next award is the William J. Musmano Memorial Award. Be it known that the William J. Musmano Memorial Award was established as an award of merit in recognition of outstanding ability, attitude, commitment, and achievement in the clinical embalming lab practicum who, in the opinion of the clinical faculty of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science, maintained the highest standards of decorum, professionalism, proven skills in the clinical embalming arena. It is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023, to Darby Fisher. <laughs> this award includes an embalming kit provided by Mr. Wayne Irvine, a graduate of PIMS who also won this award, and a $500 check provided by the PIMS Board of Directors. The next is the John Rebel Award. Be it known that the John Rebel Award was established as an award of merit in recognition of outstanding scholastic achievement in all branches of the curriculum at the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. It is hereby awarded this day, this 13th day of January, 2023, to Jessica Hoover. <laughs> Mr. Grotto, will please join us on the dais. The next award is the Eugene C. Ogrodnik Entrepreneurial Award. Be it known that the Eugene C. Ogrodnik Entrepreneurial Award is a criteria-based award of merit. This award is presented to the student who demonstrated the qualities of stewardship, scholarship, and leadership. These qualities are indicated of the man who bears the, name of, the namesake of this award. Through his passion for education, visionary prowess, and keen business acumen, he established the legacy of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science while shaping the future of the funeral service profession. In honor of its namesake, this award is presented to the student who, as recognized by the core business faculty of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science, is deemed to have the entrepreneurial spirit and greatest potential to impact the funeral service industry at large. The Eugene C. Ogrodnik Entrepreneurial Award is hereby awarded this 13th day of January, 2023, to Kelly Jo Kuhn. <laughs> the 
This award includes a $500 check from the Board of Directors of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science and is matched by a $500 check by Mr. and Mrs. Ogrodnik. The next award is the Mu Sigma Alpha Award. I'm going to ask those who, who have won it to please step forward first. Zoe Kind. <laughs> Alicia Randall. Darby Fisher. And Jessica Hoover. The Moo Signet Alpha Award is presented by the National Association of Colleges of Mortuary Science. In recognition of outstanding academic proficiency, the Mu Sigma Alpha key inscribed hereon displays an open book, which is symbolic of knowledge and wisdom. The spray of laurel denotes achievement. The lighted lamp of learning symbolizes scholarship, diligence, and perseverance. This award indicates that those who qualify are chosen and have these attributes. Congratulations on those who have won the Mu Sigma Alpha Award. As you may or may not know, we have a consortium program with Point Park University, and two students today have, uh, will be awarded a bachelor's degree in mortuary science. I'm going to ask Ms. Dr. March, Mar Dr. Mark Marnish to please step forward. Dr. Marnish is from Point Park University and will award bachelor's degrees today to Brisa Glazer. <laughs> and Emma Halstead. Two final speakers today, one from our campus and one from our online classes, that I come up and say a few final words today. First, I'm going to uh, invite Jessica Hoover to the dais. Thank you for coming today to celebrate the accomplishments of PIM's 166th graduating class. And to my classmates and future colleagues, thank you for all of the hard work that you put into your own education and the enduring support you've shown one another, friend and stranger alike. Your commitment to excellence bodes well for the future of our industry. Pittsburgh has well earned its nickname, the City of Champions and is the champion attitude that has helped us to overcome obstacles and persevere in the face of difficulty. However, none of us has accomplished this by ourselves, and it's right that we should acknowledge this, for what greater purpose do we share than to honor and serve our community? These past years have been trying, to say the very least. But what a poignant and apt environment in which to learn the true depths of compassion, the resilience of spirit, and the love of our neighbors. Fred Rogers taught us in times of difficulty to look to the helpers. But at PIMS, we learn to become the helpers. 
to be stoic in the face of pain and uncertainty, and to find within ourselves a deep well of compassion and fortitude those around us may draw from in their time of need. In my first term here, Dr. Barry Lee said something that has never since been far from my mind. He said, grief is the price we pay for love. And I know it to be true. And I believe that the students here today have paid their dues in abundance. Who among us hasn't held in our heart the echoes of pain in our own loss and laid it over that of a stranger as a template to guide our judgment with love and kindness and compassion always. After all, it's love of our fellow human that led us to the sacred calling. And it is a sacred calling. So I'm here to say to you, to go forward with love. Khalil Gibran asks us, you would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it first in the heart of life? Graduates, the time has come for us to go into the world, to go into our respective communities and honor our sacred calling with a life lived in service of others. I love all of you, and I am so proud of you, and I knew you could do this. Congratulations. At this time, I'm going to ask Alicia Randall to please step forward from our online class. afternoon. It is an honor for me to be here on behalf of the distant education students. It's been a long two years for us, but we made it. Mahatma Gandhi said, every worthwhile accomplishment, big or little, has its stages of drudgery and triumph, a beginning, a struggle, and a victory. The PIMS online program provided us an opportunity to study mortuary science from a distance at a great school and ultimately become fully licensed funeral directors and morticians. It was and is a perfect solution for those of us needing to juggle a full-time job and a family. Many times throughout the program, it felt overwhelming. In addition to being off-site, many of us also had to maintain the responsibilities of life, careers, and a family. We had to plan and dedicate time away from our normal daily schedules, be disciplined, meet deadlines, and be prepared for upcoming exam quizzes and tests. We did buckle down and did what we needed to do to achieve our goals. To the on-campus students, the one thing that you do not know about us online students is that we are jealous of you. <laughs> Every day, you get a, hey, Mr. Ritchie. <laughs> and get to see and interact with this great team here at PIMS. While us students online, we get to watch rerun lectures. <laughs> no matter if you're online or on campus student, we all worked equally hard in achieving this goal and becoming the best funeral directors and morticians. The number one question I'm always asked is, why would you wanna do this job? Some of us may say, because it's our family business, for some, it may be due to, due to life-changing event. And for others like myself, I knew this was what I was made to do. PIMS has taught us that to be successful in this field, a good funeral director or mortician is caring, compassionate, non-biased, and exudes empathy. We are guided by a great team here at PIMS. The faculty worked hard to ensure our dreams of becoming funeral directors and morticians became a reality. We may have felt that a course was too difficult, timelines were impossible to meet, or attending Zoom meetings from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. in preparation for the MBEs was ridiculous. It was bananas. <laughs> but we did it because the team of faculty that led us wasn't willing to accept failure from us. They pushed and guided us to bring us to what we are today, graduates of PIMS. 
So thank you to all the faculty and staff here at PIMS. Your unwavering support and dedication helped turn our dreams of being funeral directors and morticians into a reality. Thank you to our families. You supported us every day and every step of the way. You understood our level of commitment, encouraged us when we, we were tired or stressed, and you stood by our sides because you wanted this for us as much as we did. And last but certainly not least, thank you to all our fellow classmates. We supported one another, we built friendships, we shared notes and studied together. We did this. We are here because we are PIMS. Congratulations and best of luck to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to Jessica and Alicia. We appreciate your closing remarks. At this time, it's our tradition that we end the services today by singing America the Beautiful. We ask everyone to please stand, join together as a congregation in song. And led by Dr. Alan Lewis, we shall sing the words to America the Beautiful, which was found on the back of your program. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 166th commencement of the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. Graduates make us proud. Thank you all for your attendance.